yes, yeah, so left drama school, um, wanted to be a serious actress, sort of thought, you know, oh, it's easy, get yourself an agent, head into the RSC. It doesn't really work like that. Um, luckily, I come from a comedy family. Uh, my mum is an actress. She is Christy Montague. She's Lynn in Alan Partridge. So, and my dad does radio comedy for BBC Radio 4. So, um, it's one of those things where I think naturally I sort of just needed to accept that comedy was something I needed to go into. I knew a lot about it by this point. Um, I'm going to play you my little advert because, you know, if you can't... How do I play it? Just show me. Um, if you can't accept, you know, your embarrassing moments in your life, they'll just come back to haunt you. So this was meant to be for the uh, Football World Cup. And thanks to the uh, football players who get paid astronomical amounts of money and failed miserably in 2014, so I didn't gentlemen. get my big buyout. So, you know, I wish I was a, a football player rather than an actress. But this is just an example of what you end up doing for money in comedy. So please don't judge me too much. Gentlemen, not long now. Not long until this summer's most anticipated event finally hits our television screens. It's the thing we've all been waiting for. The excitement, the agony, the ecstasy, and the frilly bonnets. What? Yes, that's right. It's the start it's football. of pride and sensibility. Your wife has to okay you buying a TV. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. She's scary. And what better way to capture the breathless majesty of those Regency ball gowns than on a new state-of-the-art TV? So, to help you find the perfect TV, so we need to know a little bit about you, like how big is your living room? Massive. But if you don't live in a fantasy, and are a bit short on space, we'll help you find a TV with a smaller screen size. It gets worse. Which type Trust of me. screen is going to capture the vibrancy of the wonderful period yeah. costumes? And we will you be costumes. watching the drama unfold with friends? Perchance. You'll need a TV with a wide viewing angle so Colin here can see just as well as Baz. Maybe you'll be watching something other than period dramas like football. For us moving wildlife documentaries. Come on, you penguins! Mm, I could almost smell the wilderness. Sorry. Well, with an ultra HD TV, everything seems more lifelike. Let's say you're out and miss the big game. <laughs> what game? Or an episode of Pride and Sensibility? That's very likely. With a smart TV, you can always catch up online. Whatever your circumstances, we'll help you find the perfect TV. <laughs> And we'll even deliver, then mount it on the wall for you. Oh, my wife is going to kill me. Colin, can you please say you did it? No. Please, Colin. No way. Please. No. Please. No way. Please, Colin. Never. Please. Well, no. lovely. So, as you can see, these things are absolutely awfully written sometimes. And I, keep going up, I kept going up for these adverts, sort of, when I was starting out. And I said to my mum, I was like, how, how have you gone through your whole career having other people sort of write things for you? How have you? And she goes, you know, it's just, you know, I've never learned to create my own comedy. So we went on holiday, just me and her, first time we've ever been on holiday together. And it was probably one of the funniest things in the world. We went, took a package deal, just thought, screw it, let's go away to uh, Fuerteventura. It's a lovely place. Um, so we got on the plane. And the minute we were there, there was just... A hundred things went wrong. Um, we ended up not having seats together. So first we were giggling about that. And then they come in and they do, it was Thompson's, and they, lovely company, I'm not slagging them off. Um, they came down the aisle and they did all their sort of, you know, exits. Da -da -da, and the guy was very great at his job. He was truly flamboyant. But every time he did an arm gesture, he'd sort of elbow me in the head. And my mum got the giggles. I got the giggles, and then this turned into sort of like some kind of situational comedy where we were just absolutely convulsing with laughter at everything this guy said. He got so annoyed, he stopped and turned around and went, excuse me, is there a problem? Is there a problem? Is there a problem? Hmm? And I was like, no, 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 sorry. And that made it even worse. And then <laughs> I giggled more, looked at my mum, because he just sort of like got his 
flicky things that just flicked her across the face. She was still laughing. And I went, I just completely lost it loud. You know when you're really trying to hold it in, you've got the tears in your eyes. And she, the guy turned to the, my mum and went, what is wrong with your daughter? Seriously, like, does she have a problem? And I was like, and my mum went, no, 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 it's totally, it's, she's just very odd. Like, blame the entire thing on me when she's giggling away. Anyway, there's another, we, this holiday sort of carried on and we met this couple and my mum, she's very um, chatty. And she sort of made friends and they had a new baby and they ended up asking us to go for dinner with them. So we went for dinner and um, <laughs> we sat around and mum's going, oh, it's so, you know, it's so lovely, the two of you, you know, like, oh, you know, um, your wife. And she'd already gone through this really long process when he was in the loo telling us how he wouldn't marry her and he'd have, he'd had, she'd had his kid. And she felt very insecure. And my mum kept going, just literally without even thinking, oh, and you two, what a lovely couple, what a lovely marriage. What was your, you know, what? and I said, kicking her under the table. And instead of her just thinking, oh, I've obviously got this completely wrong, this girl's getting, phys like, actually upset. Um, my mum's going, what? What's your problem, Olivia? What's your problem? And I just thought that this relationship between me and her was so funny. And I said to her, do you know, maybe we should write something, mother and daughter. I'm not, you know, I keep going up for these sort of like cow and gate baby milk adverts, which at the age of 23 wasn't the thing I really wanted to be doing. Um, why don't we write something? So that Christmas, two years ago, we pitched to the BBC about a mother and daughter series. Um, based on me and my mum. Um, we kept getting all these, I'm sure you get them a lot, um, all these sort of emails and requests saying, oh, I'm doing a charity this, I'm doing a charity that, and I'm not drinking in January, so please sponsor me. And sometimes I think, are you? Are you, are you drinking? Are you not? I'm never going to know. So this whole idea is based on a charity walk down the Thames and the mother and daughter relationship about how they um, don't really do it, really. They cheat. A lot. So this has been two years in production, this writing. We joined up with another um, writer called Catherine Jakeway. She does a lot of Radio 4 comedies. She's a fantastic female writer. What's amazing is she's actually slap bang in the middle age-wise. So we've covered sort of me, 25, Catherine, she's just got two young kids, and my mum's so are trying to cover the whole perspective of female comedy. Um, <laughs> So yeah, this we've just I'm so proud of this because we've just finished recording it. Um, I mean, you know, the BBC pay you pittance, but what can you do for your dream? Um, this is called Guilt Trip. It will be out next between April and June 2016. So it's a very long span writing for radio. But the aim is obviously for TV. Um, that is two years of kind of discussing ideas, creating characters, trying to find like the funniest situations. My mum actually went on the walk. Um, heart a little bit of it, actually, it's a lie, we didn't do the whole, it's, it's all about the Thames part, so walking from the source to the end of the Thames, we didn't do the whole walk, we did about a couple of miles, um, but even on that walk, I came back from London, I've been sort of doing some work in Harrods, as you do as a struggling actress, and um, I came back and mum was like, don't worry, I've got everything, I'll, uh, I'll you know, I've, I've got all our like supplies for this walk, and I was like, brilliant, it's got up at six, went on our walk, started walking, and I was like, oh, God, I can see you've got a thermos. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I've got a thermos. I was like, brilliant. I was like, I was like do you have some snacks? And I was, she was like, yeah, I've got some snacks. Um, so we sat down about an hour and a half until I was like, oh, crack out the thermos. And um, she got the thermos out, and I opened it and started pouring it. And I was like, this is water. Why, why would you bring water in a thermos? Just put it in a bottle. Like, why didn't you bring coffee or tea or something? What, you know, why would you? So this is just, I find comedy, for me, it comes from natural moments. I don't know what you guys enjoy for your comedy, but what, what's your sort of, like, what's your favourite kind of comedy? What do you have a, what do you find funny, is what I think I'm trying to say. Hmm? I love Gavin Stacey. Gavin Stacey, yeah. Real. Okay. Peep show. Peep show, yeah. Awkward situations. situations. Awkward Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Anyone sort of into black comedy, like dark humour? Yeah? See, what's so nice about comedy is everyone is completely different about what they want to go into. Um, I think it's very hard as a comic actress or writer to sort of find your niche. Um, I think mine is definitely based on family, weirdly, and sort of situations that arise. Um, where am I? Am I going to play you... So this is a radio comedy that I did in January last year. Um, how do I get that? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not very good either. Um, yeah, I'll just play you a little clip. But 
This is written by a really, really clever guy, but it's all based on um, a sort of failing advertising agency. It's just been nominated for um, like best live audience comedy. What's different about ours? Sorry, I'm not really on a very good linear discussion topic. <laughs> What's funny about our one is it's all based on location, and that's a really rare thing to have in radio. Most of it, comedy, is done in front of a live studio audience. And I do urge you, if you... Um, do like watching live comedy. There's, the BBC do so many live comedy gigs and you get the tickets for free. And it's such a joy for like, the actors to have a good audience who are sort of up for it. And I think if you log onto their website, um, you can get those and sign up. And there's so many shows and actually a lot of stuff that you see on TV, I think Peep Show is one of them, um, started on radio. So I will play you a little snippet from this thing. I think it's only like 20 seconds. Oh, audio, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't see it anywhere. What are you wasters doing? We're not wasters, we're creatives. They're playing Hunt the Stapler. <laughs> Laura, why are you in here? I hid the stapler. <laughs> what about reception? No one ever calls. But what if they did? Mm, they can't, I left it off the hook. <laughs> she thought of everything. Get back up there. Fine, the staplers... No, 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 don't tell us, we'll keep looking. Will you? Won't we? No, and your game of hopscotch will have to wait as well. Um, okay, small clip. Um, so, well, how long I, How long are we? How long are we going for? Two minutes. Right. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of radio for you. Um, I think what's also great about comedy is if you go to. Has anyone been to the Fringe? Yeah, that's where like a lot of people start out. So that's exactly what I've been doing for the past couple of years. I, um, I actually went up to the Fringe with my brother. We wrote a show about um, Harrods, because I worked in Harrods for a couple of years. Um, got some great stories from there. But actually, that character in the radio is based on a girl I used to work opposite. She had no idea what she was doing. She was the most bored person I've ever met in my life. And I think, for me, again, that's where my comedy comes from. But um, when you go up to Edinburgh, it's just a complete mad... sort of. There's 4,000 shows playing. And if you don't have a good publicity or um, sort of like money behind you basically it's quite hard to get a show out there i actually did a free fringe show i'm really proud of my show and i'm going to be doing it in london with my brother um but um basically we turned up and there's just nothing it's just one big church hall in sort of the middle of the afternoon my show relied on lights like a backstage and i think it was one of the best experiences i've ever had because you really really learn how to sort of get get over not having of being able to look at your audience. So I kind of got to this theory by the end of it that when they came onto, onto stage, as in like came into the room with 170 seats, probably about 10 of them filled, it was almost as if I'd gone to a house party and sort of gone to the loo and it was someone's house party. I, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't really invited and I closed the door, the door handle had come off my hand and I was like, oh, turn around, there's the host taking, you know, whatever he's doing on the loo and I'm thinking, oh my God. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know, what are you doing? And then you're literally there together for an hour, free fringe, people don't know what they're, you're not selling anything, you just turn up. So they don't know what they're going to get. You don't kind of know how they're going to feel about it. So the whole show, you're kind of like, come on, yes. Um, I think that's a really good place to learn your craft. I think a lot of comedians start there and actors. Um, yeah, I think I've chosen a very bizarre subject course for you this afternoon. Um, also career choice. I think it wasn't probably a very good thing to do, but hopefully it's a marathon, not a sprint. So I'm really trying to kind of end up getting somewhere and hopefully I'll get a second series of the Radio 1, uh, Radio 1, Radio 4 thing. So if you are around, please listen to Guilt Trip. It'll be amazing. That's next year, so I'm just putting your diary. Um, thank you so much for listening. I'd, I hope that's of some interest to you and really appreciate you coming down and listening to me waffle on really badly about uh, comedy. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, thank you.